Today, my guest on the podcast is the main man at Project Radio, Cuba. How are you doing, mate? I'm good. How are you? Good, mate. Good. Good to speak to you. Um, it's good to get you on. Um, the first time I spoke to you in person. Um, I know, a, lot, a lot of the people I've been meeting in, like after lockdown and stuff like that, at gigs or when I've been out, I've been like, oh, yeah, I've been messaging you on Instagram and all that through lockdown. So it's good to put a face to a name. Yeah, it's so weird speaking to people because we meet. I've met so many people through lockdown. It's just like you start meeting them, and it's like, oh, that's what you really look like. It's yeah, <laughs> or like um, I've referred to a few people. I'm like, I don't know your name. I just know your Instagram handle. Like <laughs> <laughs> calling them by their DJ name or whatever. But I. So um, for anyone that doesn't know you, mate, tell me a bit about yourself. What? Who are you, and what is it that you do? Uh, so I'm the founder of Project Radio and Project Brand. Um, so basically what I do is kind of organise the whole thing and I'm basically one of the main organisers of the radio, the events and stuff. Nice bit. So um, whereabouts are you from? Are you, do you stay in Edinburgh? Uh, yeah, so I stay in Edinburgh. Originally I'm Polish, mm-hmm. but I was nine when I moved over. We stayed in Montrose, which is halfway between Dundee and Aberdeen. Mm-hmm. And then I moved down here for uni when I was like, when I finished school, obviously. So nice. What did you do at uni? Uh, I'm still at uni just now. I'm yeah. doing electrical engineering. Yeah, that's cool. Nice. Nothing to do with radio, <laughs> music, or anything. But yeah, nice one, mate. Um, so how did Project Radio start? What was the initial idea behind it? Uh, so it's kind of a funny story. Well, the project originally started with a cool room brand. Right. So we started it. God knows when. Two, three years ago now. We had a clothing brand that was kind of going okay. And then I started DJing. So I started bringing, like doing mixes from the clothing brand. And then people were just getting confused what we were doing. It was like a clothing brand. It was like a clothing brand or a music thing. And then I was like, oh, maybe we should just create a totally separate thing. Well, under the same sort of name, which would really just, which would just be for the music. So made it that, I called it Project Radio because it sounded cool. And then uh, I was like, and then it just clicked. I was like, why don't we actually make this into a radio station? We do mixes, so why not? And then, yeah, it just kind of led from there. What? Uh, how long ago was that? Uh, so Project Radio started last year. So it's pretty fresh. It's not It's not actually... Uh, our first birthday is on the 15th of October, I think. Which is... Right. I forgot we nice. to go. Yeah. Yeah, I think I remember the first um, thing I seen of it. Um, uh, mates with the guys from All You Need, and I remember they were sharing like the Scottish selectors thing. Yeah, um, yeah. So that was like one of our first uh, mix series that we done, and then I put that that under the what's it called Project Radio. So. Yeah, and with the variety of thinking, like it was Test Press that were involved in like the clothing brand at the start and stuff. I yeah, so we had Test like, Press. We had Cook from Edinburgh who. Uh, who modelled, we had some boys from Aberdeen as well, so it was just kind of, we are just doing all the rounds. Yeah. It was quite funny seeing TJs trying to model, it was so unnatural, but it was funny. <laughs> um, how many people are involved in the brand? Is it- uh, there's four main people that deal with all the media um, organising and stuff, and then I think there's 70 or 80 now. Actually, no. I think there's more because we're just a way to start our first days as well. So there's another like 20 odd people. So probably around 100 people now. Yeah, that's class, man. Um, yeah, it's so big. Yeah. And the thing is, I've maybe met like <laughs> out of them. Yeah. But everyone knows each other just through WhatsApp. And so it's so fun. So. Yeah, that's it, mate. It's, great. it's a great way to create like a small community of like DJs yeah. and things like that, man. It's good. Um, so you, you talked about growing up in Poland. When did you sort of first become interested in music? Um, I, I was actually thinking about this when you sent me the questions. Um, I, I remember the first, I kind of, I've always liked rap and I kind of, I kind of always like electronic music. But I remember the first, first time I uh, started listening to music was on a bus to uni. And then my mates were getting into it. And I remember like listening to Dusky or something on SoundCloud. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And I was like, I remember it was like one of those moments I remember. And then, yeah, eventually end up leading into like going to events and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. What is it? What uh, I've been to Poland. Uh, I went to Krakow on holiday, but I was with my mum and my sister, so I never really went out. Is there like a big music scene in terms of electronic music in Poland? Have you, do you go back often? 
Uh, not so often now. No. Um, but yeah, I think I think there is a scene, but it's a bit different from what we have here. Yeah. But yeah, I've seen uh, there was a I've seen a few boiler rooms and stuff from Poland. So oh, yeah, that's yeah. interesting, man. Um, so you spoke about dusky, like kind of deep house stuff. Yeah, that's what I kind of started with, and then yeah. I remember when I was younger, I used to listen to dubstep and stuff, like in second right. year. But but everyone, mm-hmm. I, th- I think we everyone went through a stage of that, and then obviously fell out of that. And then yeah, I remember co- coming back into my electronic music and like starting with house, and then progressing into techno, and then yeah, yeah. So um, you, you said rap as well. Like, what kind of who are your favorite rapper artists? I like Kanye. I like American rap. I also like Polish rap. That's what I kind of grew up on when I was before I moved over. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of trying to get introduced rap into the station, so mm-hmm. as well. But uh, yeah, I've I don't know. I've I've kind of fallen out with rap. So I when I when I started growing up, obviously rap and like I grew up on rap. And then when I went to uni, it was more like electronic. Like I started like listening to that sort of music more. You're there. Yeah, sorry, it, it, it's paused for a minute, mate. Uh, sorry, I've got you back. Yeah, it's cut, cool. yeah, cut out. Yeah, so like I was obviously at uni, I started DJing, and then I started listening to electronic music. So I like totally forgot about rap, and it was like over a lockdown, I kind of started coming back and like listening to like, and just like kind of I kind of got fed up of listening to like techno and stuff because I wasn't going to events there was like no motivation behind it so it was kind of it took kind of took me back to my roots and then but yeah I'm proper getting into my techno and stuff now yeah yeah definitely mate I've noticed a big difference in my listening habits since the clubs opened back up um yeah, especially for like, DJing too like you need to be on the ball finding songs and things like that but I yeah. I was the same through lockdown man like listening habits a lot more chilled out different genres and stuff like that have yeah, you I had a chat when you go when you go I was going to say, have you had a chance to listen to Donda? You mentioned Kanye West. Uh, no, I've not. No, I haven't either. I've not given it a proper listen yet, man. I've just sort of brushed over it. But um, yeah. I didn't think he was ever going to release it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, but apparently um, they released it without his permission, I was reading. Did they? Yeah, That's like the, the label or something, but mad. But what were you going to say there? Uh, I've actually forgotten. Uh, About uh, lockdown? The... Oh, lockdown, yeah. I think everyone's kind of habits, just like kind of went away and you could see that by electronic music everyone just like died and that was obviously just coming back to life now mm-hmm. after yeah. so like after the year That's yeah. it. so um when did you start djing whereabouts have you i noticed on your instagram you played a few venues and that when did you was that just a thing when you started uni uh yeah so i started uni and then so i lived in aberdeen for two years before i moved to edinburgh and then that's when I started listening to my electronic music and stuff. And that's kind of where my influence started. And then I started sort of picking up DJ and got my first set of decks when I was still in Aberdeen. And then I moved over here. And then I managed to get into a group. I don't know. It's like uh, we've got a techno society at Napier. Right. So I started playing with them. And it was just like normal bars and stuff. And then that kind of led to... Sorry, my phone's going off. Sorry. Um, and then that led into me play. We played like Hector's main room, done all the. So I went from second room two, which is like just one of the side rooms in Hakavol, to play in like main room for nuts and stuff. And then that kind of led into me starting with Fly. Uh, yeah. And so, I, oh, sorry, my phone's really going off. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, so yeah, we started, so I started playing for Fly, we were in room two, and then COVID came and that kind of stopped. Yeah, that's it, man. Um, So, in terms of Project Radio, you mentioned like you have a, a large pool of artists, is there anything you look for in certain artists when they're when they're joining the station? Um, In terms of electronic music, is it like any genres or is there certain things that you look for? So I think we've got quite a big range of music and like quite a a big range of artists we've had everything from like garage to like breaks and stuff so it's kind of like just if i listen to something and i like the sound of it i'll be like yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i want you on the station sort of thing yeah Yeah. and um like you are you'd mentioned that you're now doing thursdays is it do you want to get to a stage where you're sort of you've got every day 
yeah, that's the plan. Um, but it's, we've got so many people on that's quite hard to find like new people to come on board. So mm-hmm. yes, yeah, I've really struggled to fill Thursday up. But um, yeah, but that that that's the hope. I hope by the end of the year that we have four days running, and then eventually we'll get to seven days, and we can just have our own broadcasting and be on fm and like dub radio and everything and people mm-hmm. just listen to us in the car and stuff but yeah yeah that's the dream it's... that'd be sweet mate that'd be sweet um like logistically is it is it difficult running a radio station is it quite stressful um if it's organized it's not really well, i've got we've got a set schedule each week so you just message the djs each week each week at the start of the week remind them because half of them forget <laughs> half of them will forget about their shows just give them a slight nudge to get their uh, shows recorded but it's we use a website and then that kind of does all, all all the logistics side of it things yeah but i it's... think we've got it quite organized so we just for actually uploading mixes we just download them from the drive and yeah yeah, that's quite good. Yeah, mine's is easy to remember because I'm the second Saturday of every month, so I don't I don't struggle that much with, with forgetting yeah. back. I'm like, when it turns a new month, I'm like, oh shit, right, okay, when's the next Saturday? And make sure I'm I'm recording. Yeah, you get some people that are like, oh, I'll message them and they're like, oh shit, I forgot again. And it's like, <laughs> I'll, I'll record it tonight sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. So when you started Project, um, do you think that like at the time that like there's enough support for like your artists in Scotland and, and the UK and things like that? for this type of radio like do you think they get enough support in mainstream media um i think if you get into if you get to know the people and that run club nights and stuff in your city i think you'll get pushed but if you don't have the sort of connections you there's it's i think it's quite hard for you to actually establish yourself mm-hmm. and i think the radio's done like it's worked so well for everyone because obviously all of us have interacted and we've made some sort of connection so like You've got like bedroom tracks who have been like putting on like Van Damme or whoever, Maka, who, for like their mixes. And that's obviously come from the relationship that we've built through Project. Same as you, yourself, you've had like some of our other residents on. It's like it's it's connecting everyone. And I think it's such a good thing because it's a community and like we're all building each other. So it's, I think we've created something really good. Definitely, but, man. Uh, that, that's an aspect of it that I think is brilliant in terms of the, like the community and networking and people putting in what's happening at the weekend. Like, does anyone want yeah. to come along? Stuff like that, man. It goes a long way. Yeah, but like you see gigs that are coming up, and it's like, oh, it's Project Radio. People from like Project Radio, Project Radio, Project Radio, Project. Like, and everyone just bonds and like, oh yeah, I play for Project Radio, and then you're like, start speaking to them, and you're like, all of a sudden you're really good mates. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's nice, lovely. mate. Nice. So uh, you recently partnered with uh, Heavily Beer as well, like yeah. one of your first main sponsors. How did that come about? Um, so kind of funny story. Um, it, it was just a stupid idea at first. I was like, I seen the, four, is it 44 Magazine? They're sponsored by Red Bull. So I posted on my Facebook. I was like, oh, does anyone have connections for Red Bull? And then... I got a few people messaging me about Red Bull, but one of my mates, he worked for Heverly and he was like, oh, you'll get, I'm like, they'll offer you much more than Red Bull. And they were like, he, they'll help, he said that they'd help us with like events and stuff, which they have. And they, like, honestly, they've helped us so much with everything that we've done. And it's just, yeah, we've got, but we have another partnership coming up. When's this coming up? Uh, Monday. <laughs> just yeah. keep it. I'll keep. I'll keep it silent. I'll keep yeah, it silent. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, but Sport. yeah, we've got we've That's got good. something else coming up. Nice, mate. Which nice, is big quality. So, uh, Hevel is that Belgian? Am I right in saying? Yeah, so it's Belgian, but it's actually owned by tenants. Oh, there you go. I didn't know that. Yeah, so and like, yeah, it's so weird. I've got. I get messages from. I get emails with people like at tenants, and it's mm-hmm. like what has happened like how yeah. how the whenever i tell anyone it's like how the hell did you land on it's like it's just pot luck yeah same with the, the rest of the radio station it's all just luck that's it mate once you, you start know. something man like, you never know what can happen if you just keep working at it yeah. things just pop up and shit happens for you it's, um 
So with heavily as well, is there any other brand? Well, you mentioned that you've got another brand coming up, but is there any like huge brands or like dream brands that you'd love to collaborate with in the future? Well, I'd like to work with Red Bull, but well, we've actually got had an email back, but they only offered us a fridge. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that, I kind of said no to that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think working with some big magazines, let's say like DJ Mag or something, would be cool. Mm. Just like we've obviously yeah. got our own writers, so like collaborating with them yeah. would be really cool. But yeah, that's a wee while away. Mm-hmm. I obviously it's early days, like in the radio station, but it's like. Is this? Do you want this to become like your full time job? Like, is it? How do you? How do you make it profitable? Um, is this like sponsorships and partnerships and things like that? Is that kind of the route you do it? Uh, no. So I pay for the whole thing myself. Yeah. Just now. Right. I fund the whole radio and like heavily doesn't really help us. They they only help us with events and stuff. We don't right, okay. get any money directly from them. But um, yeah. It's but I I really want project to turn into a full-time job for myself because i really enjoy it and that's literally if you speak to my girlfriend that's all i do like speak about it day in day out wake up wake up like in the middle of the night think of ideas and <laughs> like it's actually taking over my life but yeah, yeah. nice mate it shows you're passionate and obsessed mate um and i, I am like, obsessed yeah that's it, mate. That, and that's how you become successful for sure man i, I don't doubt that that it, it'll work out um are there any big artists that you haven't had on yet that you would like to 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 have on? Um, we fight. Uh, we, um, I'm not sure. Something like Melody or something would be cool, or like Dennis Sola. I think that's pretty achievable. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've had quite big people. I've had DJ House on, which see when I seen that coming up, I was like, what? Like, uh-huh. what the fuck? Buzzing. Um. Like uh, we were actually supposed to have melody on as well, but that kind of fell through. Right. Um, but yeah, we've had quite a few people, so it's just I think it, it, when it comes, it'll come, and then it's just the sort of path you take that will take you there. Definitely, mate. Just keep working at it. So, yeah. have you have you had a chance to be back out since uh, you had the Jack Master event, didn't you? So, were you like the co-promoter on that sort of thing? Yeah. So yeah, we were co-promoters with Hector's. Um so yeah, that was mental. Because I've always looked up to Jack and I've always been like always been a wee fanboy and then actually getting to meet him and being like, oh my god, standing behind him was just like just so real. But yeah, that's sick. Yeah. Was that in the liquid got, rooms? Yeah. yeah nice man, nice. We've got a few more events coming up, hopefully. So good stuff, man. Keep yeah. Keep your eyes peeled for that one. Keep your eyes peeled for that. <laughs> and uh, in terms of like actually going out clubbing, have you been out? Um, not that much. We went out on the Monday when everything opened, and we went up to uh to Jack Master. I've not really been out since oh. then. I've kind of been grafting away, to be honest with you. Nice mate, nice. I have been out a few times, man. I went to see Optimo in uh, room two. Oh, did you? Oh, honestly, mate, one of the best nights I've ever had in my life. The, the set was crazy man it was uh, unreal i think they played about five tunes i knew all night but and it was still amazing like proper dj set like i have enjoyed it man have you seen them yeah i've i've seen them and when hector's had them They're really yep. good unreal man um i it's just amazing being back mate i think the i've been been out twice and i've just noticed like scottish people were already mental before this lockdown but i think like yeah, the, en- the energy in that man. That are in the rooms. I mean, you've probably seen it at liquid rooms, man. It's just like it seems to have kicked up a little. Yeah. yeah, everyone's just going crazy just now. Yeah. But it was always gonna happen, wasn't it? When everyone's after everyone's been locked up for so long. Yeah. Like everyone just wants to go crazy. Mm-hmm. So you were a co-promoter, is that something you want to get into as well? Like promoting events yeah. and yeah, so I think for project to kind of start being profitable and for us to sort of make it worth our while I think events are the way to go so we've got quite a few things coming up um in the near future so yeah nice Should hopefully start getting them more regular and stuff mm-hmm. and I noticed that you've had a release on Bandcamp as well with some of the artists from Project Radio is that something that you you think you'll do again in the future yeah we've got another one coming up from Maka um 
trying to get it, trying to get premiered somewhere. Um, just trying to inquire about it just now, but it's finished. It's ready to go. Just need to get it, get the artwork done, and then get a wee nice premiere ready for it. Nice. Is is production something you do yourself? Uh, I tried to. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it wasn't really my thing, but I don't know. I've always liked music and stuff, but I feel like organizing and being like behind the scenes is more of a my thing. Although I love DJing and stuff, don't don't get me wrong, but I feel all I feel like organization and like planning events and stuff. That's like what I really really enjoy. So yeah, yeah, it's difficult, mate. And there's only so much time in the day. Do you know what I mean? You sound like a busy guy, but you, um, like production takes takes time and effort, man. And, if you're busy with stuff, if you feel like you're you're good somewhere else, then that's probably a good idea, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, on you go. And that's partially why we like I started probably like doing the radio because I was kind of getting fed up with DJing and then I was I was we were DJing like each week, every week and stuff, and it was just like getting a bit too much. And then I was really wanting to try rate the like organization and stuff, and then I was like. Like that's what kind of actually took me through lockdown and stuff. That's what kept me busy. So, yep, okay. nice man. So, you mentioned like you sort of wanted to become your full time job and that. So, what is kind of the end goal for Project Radio? Like, how how will you define success for the brand going forward? I think, um, the success would be for Project to run itself or well, maybe not run itself but be profitable when we have money and then be on air seven days a week 24 hours a day sort of thing but i'm pretty happy with the way we're going just now and like i think like just now i'm more than happy with the progress that we've made but yeah i think does that answer your question <laughs> yeah sure um <laughs> Like, is there any, like, do you think that, do you do you want to get into, like, you're running events and stuff, is there any, like, dream, do you have, like, aspirations in that sense of, like, making it somewhere into a certain venue or, like, booking a certain name? Or is it genuinely just to the point where Project Radio can become, like, your job? I think if it becomes my job, that'll be me happy for my life. But, yeah, obviously I want it to progress and I want Project. We've obviously done the best in Aberdeen and we were trying to do events in Dundee and I want my project to kind of not just stay in Edinburgh I wanted to grow we've had we've had we've almost had a thing in Ibiza through summer as well so it's just like just to, I just wanted to get it to get it out there and just have parties everywhere and for people to know projects as that cool party place and like good music and everyone just to like want to be a part of it sort of thing. Nice mate nice well I'm sure it will get there eventually, mate, because you sound like a hard working man. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you mentioned a few things. What's coming up in the near future for a project that you can speak about? I don't know how much of it I can speak about. Um, <laughs> uh, we've got that release with Maka. Um, I've got that new partnership coming up, but I can't remember. That, that should be coming out in the next week, hopefully. Um and that will see us doing quite a lot of events and stuff. Uh, we're also wanting to do our own events. We've got a wee collab coming up with Archives from Glasgow. And that's going to see one of our Irish residents coming over. Um, oh, I actually know who that is. I'm um, mates with Michael and Craig, so... Yeah, <laughs> so you'll know exactly what yep. it is. Yeah, nice, um, I think, yeah, just loads of events. Obviously, want to get that Sunday up. We've got Thursdays dropping out this week. Um, so, yeah, we're just busy, busy, busy. Class, mate, class. And uh, where can people find you and where can they listen to Project Radio? Uh, so they can listen on Alexa. Sorry, that's Alexa coming up. <laughs> um, uh, on, we've got an app on Android and iOS, and then you can listen to us on our website as well, which is projectradio.live. Nice. Nice, man. And uh, socials is just Project Radio on it? Uh, yeah, it's project.radio on Instagram and then Project Radio X on Facebook. Nice, mate. Nice. 
And uh, one last question that I like to ask anyone involved in music, and it's what does music mean to you? Oh, um, to put, it, put it into a statement. Music. What's it mean to me? Um, quite a hard question. Eh? Uh, I think music is my passion and something that makes me. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I think music is my passion and I think that's, it just makes me who I am and it's made me come to where I am just now and I love it for that. Yep, nice mate. Yeah. Nice one. Well, Cuba, it was good to speak to you mate, finally uh, get a chance to to find out a bit more yeah. about you. Um, yeah. So enjoy your weekend at Riverside if you end up going there mate. Oh, well, hope I go. <laughs> we we'll see. I'm sure you will. But anyway, mate, it's nice catching up with you, and I'm sure a lot of people will be um, interested to hear about Project Radio and find out a bit more about yourself. So, nice one, mate. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers, man. Catch you.